Today I'm going to be talking about how a type of gene regulation can impact the expression of genes in a developmental network. To do this, we're going to discuss why adjacent cells in dragons do or do not express spikes. In this example, one individual is questioning why the dragon he spotted only has spikes on his back and not on other areas of his body. The second individual responds by stating that the expression of the spikes is possible in every cell due to every cell in the dragon's body having the same genome. However, the reason that every cell does not express the spikes is because of a regulatory process such as histone modification. The histones can undergo acetylation or deacetylation, which affects how histone tails interact with the DNA that it is wrapped around. In acetylation, the DNA is loosely bound around the histone because the negative charge on the tail of the histone is neutralized. This allows for transcription of the gene at that part of the DNA strand to occur. In deacetylation, the DNA is tightly bound because the negative charge of the histone tail is restored, blocking transcription from occurring for that area of the DNA strand bound to the histone. You can think of this like wearing a belt. If the belt is buckled tightly, you would have a difficult time eating more food because your stomach is being repressed from expanding any further. If the belt is loosened, then you would have a more comfortable time eating more food because there is more room for food to fit, like how transcription needs space between the histone and the DNA to occur. Whether a gene is expressed or not determines if the protein created by that part of the DNA sequence is expressed. For example, the cells on the dragon's back have certain proteins that stimulate or repress the expression of the next protein in the developmental network. If a histone were to block the transcription of a part of the DNA that was pertinent for the next step in forming spikes, then spikes would not form. Let's make the protein a real-life example. Let's say that in order for the spikes to form, the dragon must drink special water from a lagoon, but the dragon was born and kept in captivity by a king and he needs to escape. The dragon can escape the castle if he can breathe fire onto the knight and prevent the from stabbing him with his sword. In order to breathe fire, the dragon must eat the dragon fruit every day it is fed to him. If every event happened how it was supposed to, then the dragon would form spikes. However, if there was a mutation, the spikes would not form. For example, say that the dragon was not able to breathe fire no matter how much dragon fruit he ate. The knight would then be able to stab him with the sword, and the dragon would never be able to leave the castle and drink water from the lagoon and form spikes. However, say that the knight lost his sword, then the dragon could escape the castle and drink the water and form spikes regardless of his ability to breathe fire. Let's say that the knight lost his sword and the dragon could escape, but the lagoon was dry. This would cause the dragon not to form spikes because the lagoon is the ultimate contributor factor to forming spikes, and what is upstream in the network does not have as great of an impact. Lastly, if the dragon was never fed the dragon fruit, the dragon would not be able to breathe fire, so the knight would be able to stab the dragon with his sword, but that would not matter because all of the entrances that the dragon could have escaped from the castle were closed off, so the dragon would not be able to escape even if he could breathe fire, and thus he would not be able to drink the lagoon water and warm spikes. In the body, genes are transcribed from the DNA sequence and produce different proteins. These proteins interact and change how genes are expressed, and this is similar to how the dragon story ends.